Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this SICC webinar. The pace of digitalization in business is still slower than it needs to be. Resistance to change is a key factor. Here in the chamber, for example, we only stopped issuing checks in the last couple of years. Again, it was thanks to the pandemic and working from home that enabled us to stop accepting certification fees for trade documents in cash and checks. We have many member companies who still use checks to pay their annual membership dues, despite the convenience of pay now and other electronic payment modes. We still have many customers who continue to submit their trade documents manually, despite there being a perfectly good online application platform that is easy and cheap to use. When foreign visitors come to Singapore, they see much to impress them, but they are always so surprised about how far behind we are with digitizing standard office processes. We won't be a smart nation until we do. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, why we're here this afternoon, to learn about the advantages and the simplicity of digitalizing invoices and enabling straight through processing. We have two guest speakers for you this afternoon, Mr. Gilfred Chu, Senior Manager with IMDA, and the evangelist in chief of Invoice Now. Our second speaker is Mr. Aaron Ang, head of mid-market business Singapore for SAP Asia. And Aaron will share how he and his colleagues help SMEs support the adoption of Invoice Now. As usual, at any time during this webinar, you can type your questions into the Q&A function which you will find in the Zoom toolbar at the bottom of your screen. In a moment, I will ask Gilfred to present. He will be followed by Aaron, and I'll be back once Aaron finishes his presentation to moderate the dialogue with our guests. So enjoy the webinar. Let's have lots of questions and participation. So Gilfred, over to you. Hi, everyone. I hope you can hear me. First and foremost, uh, many thanks to Victor and his team at SICC for the kind invitation. My name is Gilfred. I'm from the e-invoicing project office of IMDA. Thank you for having me on board this session. First and foremost, I'll be sharing with you a little bit about what the e-invoicing program is in Singapore, um, some of the fundamental attributes of the network, what does it mean to the business community out there, and how you can come on board as well. Now, first and foremost, uh, let me share with you about what the program is about. First, uh, the nationwide invoicing network in Singapore started on January the 9th, 2019. Now, that's just a little over two and a half years ago, but actually is not a Singapore-based network. In fact, it's been around for more than 13 years. Started in the European community, been around there, and it's been used by more than 34 countries internationally with about 400,000 organizations exchanging invoices to a rate of about 130 million in, uh, invoice transactions in a year. So that speaks about volume, but that speaks about a maturity. Perhaps this is the most mature cross-border network of its kind, especially when you deal with international trade and all that. This is- Gilfred I'm, I'm, Gilfred, I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Could you please move your mic closer to your mouth because uh, you're not very, very loud. You're not very clear. And I want to make sure everybody hears you. Right, I will do that. So allow Thank me you. to just use, use this, uh, this way of doing it. So as I was sharing earlier, <clears throat> just to backtrack a little bit, the, the network is not a new network. It's not a Singapore-based network. In fact, it's been around internationally for more than 13 years, used by over 35 uh, countries in the world exchanging to a rate of about 130 million invoice transactions in a year. So that speaks of volume. That talks about a matured cross-border network of its kind. Now, having said that, in Singapore, if I may go on to the next slide, in Singapore, um, we had launched this on the 9th of January, and the intention was that 
you know, as we go on to our journey today, where we are is that we are now um, able not only not only for the government side but also for the international and business communities so on the 9th uh, on the 20th of january just last year agd now you will, you will know agd they are the accountant general's department they are the you could say the central office of receiving invoices for all government ministries and agencies there are 22000 suppliers of government uh, agencies and you are among some of them they are able to receive the PAPL invoice, uh, invoices from anyone who is also on the network. Now, sometime last year, they also said that they, this is their preferred way of receiving invoices. Okay, and as of today, and I'll share a little later on another slide about something called invoice now. Now, but before I go on further, I think it's, it's important for us because there are various representations in this meeting, you may have a different understanding of what invoice or e-invoice is about. Now, e-invoice is about the direct transmission of invoices in a structured digital format from one finance system to another between suppliers and buyers through a delivery network called PEPL. Okay, now, so just to clarify this, obviously paper invoices that some of you could be still exchanging is truly out of the question. But I think predominantly today, Many of you are exchanging, in other words, you are receiving from your suppliers or you are sending out to your customers uh, an invoice in the form of perhaps a PDF wrapped up in an email. Am, am I right? So you are, you are doing that even currently. Now, what that essentially means is while it is sent through a media that's electronic, the receiving party, let's say you're sending out, the receiving party cannot uh, immediately translate that or, or, or have that transposed into his accounting system. He has to do maybe sending out his invoice, uh, his invoice through the email chain, getting validation for you know, the, all the three-way matching. He has to print it out maybe. He's got to get someone to key in the invoice into his accounting system. Hopefully, he doesn't introduce another new error into it. So essentially, there is not a full-scale end-to-end electronic transfer from one site to another site. So while PDF, wrapped up in an email, it's not too bad. It is not as efficient as well. Now, then on the second category, there are a lot of you who perhaps have gone to the stage of using what we call optical character recognition, OCR. Now, you know what that is? That is actually the ability to have documents that are scannable and readable by machines. At the same time, it's readable by human form. You can see it, you know what exactly the invoice looks like. The going success rate of an OCR based document is about 99 plus percent of accuracy. Not too bad actually, right? But what it means, if you think about it, is that if you have a single page of an invoice comprising a, a thousand characters or digits, the chances are that 10 of those could be incorrect. So my question to you is, which 10? Do you know which 10 are incorrect? So because we don't know, we can't verify that offhand, we would have to therefore introduce, we can't remove basically the need for a manual intervention, the need for someone to eyeball and validate the invoices from its original source. Again, it's a bit of intensive labor requirement. So it's not something we want to do, not the best practice, but you know, it's one way, one way across. Having said that, many of you are familiar, especially if you are suppliers, to very large organizations, your customers. Uh, and if you are in the retail business, for example, you may be familiar with Sing Xiong, NTUC, Dairy Farm, Cold Storage, and Giant, and so on and so forth. You would probably be, be keying in your invoices on their platform, on their, you know, their, their uh, online platform, correct? Essentially, it means that you would have to go in there and key in. Now, for them, it's not a problem because you are keying all your information for them. You don't do any data entry. But think about it, in some way, you have the information of your invoices already prevalent in your own accounting system, but you are having to key it a second time. It's like, if I may say the word, it's like the double entry in the wrong way of the word, okay? You're keying in twice. And hopefully, again, you don't introduce another element of error. So what is e-invoicing doing? It's trying to eradicate or at least reduce the need for you to have to key in twice or key in, in a number of places. Especially, for example, if you, if you supply to all those, you know, all those supermarkets and every single platform is different, you know, you have your own ID for everyone, you got to key in differently for every single one. So it's a lot, it's quite daunting, actually. Now, moving forward from there, um, you would, some of you would have heard of Invoice Now. Like, 
in the very beginning, in the, the very first page, you saw the logo invoice now. And what comes to your mind? Ah, it looks just like pay now. And, and you are right. Invoice now and pay now are two sides of the same of the same coin. Invoice now has to do with e-invoicing and pay now has to do with uh, e-payment. Both are the are of the same uh, coin of the same uh, you know different sides of the same coin. Essentially, if you think about it, uh, you know today we are also working with some of the banks, the, the three banks, the local banks that we have, OCBC, DBS, and UOB, and they have also enabled this Apple e-invoicing on their platforms so that their 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 clients can actually use their platform besides doing banking transactions also allow pay, uh, you know, invoices to be sent or received and payments to be made on that very same platform. I'll talk about that a little later. So what exactly is invoice e-invoicing? And, and one question that comes to mind for you right now is, so am I already on something that is on e-invoicing or do I have to go and buy a new accounting solution to make myself on this platform? Well, technically speaking, it is not a platform. E-invoicing or the Papal e-invoicing network or what we call invoice now is actually a network so it is supposed to be agnostic to whatever solution you are using in other words you could be uh, using sap and many of you are there are using sap sap well they are an access point provider and they provide the full length of facilities and services that enable you to be on invoice now or you could have your suppliers who want to send you invoices and they're not so big but they're on you know, smaller solutions such as um, Zero for that matter, or Microsoft Dynamics, or A8000, or any of those other cloud-based solutions. As long as they are also on those solutions who are invoice now ready, they can essentially send you invoices using a Papal network. So in other words, we are, we are expanding the use of this across, and it's agnostic to whether you're a small or large organization, whether you're from one industry or sector to another industry or sector, or whether you're using SAP or Oracle or whatever other platform you may have, as long as you are on the Papal network. Now, moving forward, I think for the most of you, I can say, uh, I can speak for you in that you probably would have accounts receivable as well as accounts uh, accounts payable on your environment you have suppliers you have customers obviously that means that the value proposition to you to be able to uh, send or receive invoices on the platform electronically is a lot more efficient i'll talk some figures i will talk about some figures later on some of the studies that we have done and you know kind of cost is involved in invoicing um, let's talk about some of the values that comes, and this is coming in from a lot of our, our what we call our chain leaders of our, or our large organizations or enterprises who have gone into e invoicing. Fast billing. Now, one of our organizations, you would know who they are, uh, Fuji Film. Fuji Film is very large, and they have a total of about 32,000 plus invoices sent out to their customer on the monthly basis that is huge by any comparison 32,000 invoices sent out and they used to take up to about nine days you know end on end nine working days to process an invoice that takes this how long it takes because there are many many stages involved in that but through the use of e-invoicing coupled with other automations that i'll talk about later as well they found that they are able to reduce that nine days to about three days. So it's one third the amount of time they need for their outbound processing. Now that's, that's not all actually, and something that we didn't even realize in the beginning. And that is if you can push out your invoices earlier or faster, there's a better chance that essentially the payout, uh, the, the paying will also come in earlier because you know you push it out earlier, you give your payment uh, terms and all that, and they will make payment accordingly. Now for the case of Fuji Film, they realize that by so doing, they're able to increase or improve their interest on, in, uh, uh, interest on in, uh, income interest by a value of about um, 15%. In other words, because everything moves ahead, they get paid faster, you know, interest improves in their, in, in their bank, uh, bank account. Obviously, it's beneficial to them. So that's one of the benefits for being on e-invoicing because of fast billing. The other aspect is because we reduce the element of having to go through multiple stages, manual, you know, and, and, and other ways and conversions and so on. The, the invoices come in cleaner. Uh, and, and just to share some examples of costs that I will talk about, uh, we did a study with Monitor Deloitte sometime in 2018 in terms of the cost of doing invoicing, paper invoicing. Uh, they found out that um, from the point that the, an invoice is being generated by the, at the supplier end, prepared it and all that, uh, all the way to the point that it is being received at the customer end and prepared for pay, payment that whole end-to-end -end process actually costs one invoice per, or for that company 
end-to-end. End -to -end. So it covers a whole um, set of things. It covers you know, um, your requirement for archiving, for manual processing, for manual data entry, and so on and so forth. $8.40. Now, that's assuming the data is clean. They also went on to say that should the data be erroneous for any reason, in particularly when you know, it's not been trans transcribed correctly or there's some errors in the transition and so on, it, the, the cost can go up to $72, 72 sing dollars. That's a lot of money to pay for a single transaction. We don't see that because probably it's all you know fixed costs. You know it's about human labor and everything we have. We have we have accountants to do it for us. But these are things that we can perhaps improve and save. So clean data is also a, a way of improving your, your your bottom line as well. Thirdly, because of the introduction of e invoicing, there comes around a lot of other processes and automation that can improve and expedite the process. For example, uh, some of our solution uh, players have also incorporated things like uh, you know three way matching using you know ro robotics and all that. Uh, uh, some of them have used an AI technology writing on their, their environment for, for e invoicing to ensure that there's also a possibility to you know detect fraud or detect any uh, ab abnormalities. So they've included that in terms of part and parcel of the automation that improves the efficiency of how invoices will go from one end to the other end very, very efficiently. Of course, as far as the network is concerned, one thing that's very important is that the Papal network, okay, it is fu uh, fully encrypted. Okay, so I'll, ex I'll talk that a little later when I introduce something called the access point providers. So because of a rigorous, well-governed uh, ecosystem, it also enables and it catalyzes the ability for organizations to write on financing, whether it's invoice financing or invoice you know, uh, 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 factoring or financing. There's an ability for other players like the, uh, the finance organizations or, or, or credit bureaus to come in to support this whole thing and also in the same way allow organizations to get early payouts, uh, early payments from you know, their invoices. So these are things that are now currently in, uh, being in discussion. There are, there are some task force that's looking into this at a national level as well. All right, that's for financing. Uh, I talked a bit earlier just now about you know, payments and so on. So the whole idea is that if you already have um, somewhat um, uh, well-defined well you know, environment, the idea of enabling another part of the spoke, for example, invoice now to be incorporated in the whole chain of activities, essentially allows your procure to pay or your, your order to cash environment to be even more digitalized. I guess that's where we want to be. We want to help to look into areas which are so not currently very well you know, digitalized. I mean, if you look at it, um, IMD is well known for providing grants you know, for, to, to digitalize organizations and you have, you have a very well defined environment for maybe CRM. For your, you know, for your HR and so on and so forth. But when it comes to the transaction across organizations and particularly for invoices, which is probably the most prevalent of documents that you exchange, why can't we do that also the same way? Why can't we have it fully digitalized from end to end? Okay. Um, now, at this time, many may be asking, yeah, that's kind of a nice thing to do, but you know, I don't even know who among my, uh, my, my counterparties, my, my business partners, are already on a network because if they're not there, it's no point for me to get in as well, which is, which is very valid. So one of the ways, or there are two ways here. Uh, on the left, you see the one that originated from the, the EU community. They have something called directory, papal.papal.eu, and that allows organizations to go in and you can search by you know, partial keying in of your company name or your, uh, your, your Papal ID, and the list of organizations that conform to that will be listed for you. Singapore has its own version just recently. We have also created one called the papaldirectory.sg and you are able to search for your counterparties just by keying in a partial you know, name of uh, his organization, his UEN, and as well as you know, his Papal ID if you have that. And also on top of that, if for example, you have a list of UENs and you want to say, hey, you know, I don't know really out of my database of all my suppliers, how many of them are really on the Papal network? Well, send that, that, that spreadsheet or that table over and this portal will return to you the information re regarding all the organizations who are in or not yet in the network. By the way, speaking of Papal ID, how do we craft a Papal ID? You look at the bottom on the right side, you see an example of a Papal ID. It starts off with 0195 colon S-G-U-E-N and guess what? The rest of the numbers are uh, basically the company's UEN number. So not difficult at all to find out the company's uh, Pebble ID as well. All right? So you can do this afterwards uh, immediately if you want. It's already available for you to do your search. 
Now, let me take this one slide to explain a little bit about the structure. How, how does it work? You know, how does this Papal thing work? Do I don't have to change my, my solution? So something must be happening in the middle of it all. And yes, today you make a phone call to a friend, you know, let's say in Australia. It, it doesn't matter if you're on Singtel, Starhub, M1, or you know, TPG or whatever. And it doesn't matter whether he's on you know, Telstra or Optus. Because at the end of the day, just by calling the full length of his number correctly, it will go through your operators to his operator and it will be received by him directly. In the same way, the technology is also similar for Papal. Papal works on the basis of having external organizations and they could be running on a solution, you know, an accounting solution, or maybe just spreadsheets. Or if you're using SAP, your IDOC documents could be the way for you to interface to other organizations. It goes through, as you can tell, uh, you can see there's a purple color box, boxes around the center ring. Those are what we call the access point providers, APs for short. In Singapore, we have approved, we have validated, uh, we have uh, allowed uh, about 35 such organizations to be the access point providers. SAP is one of them, by the way. So essentially, you will route your invoices in whatever native format you have. You know, if it's, it's IDOC, that's fine. If it's on any other document, it's on spreadsheets, it's on, you know, whatever form. As long as you agree to send that format and the receiving party here, which is your access point provider, is able to take that, convert it to a PEPL neutral standard or specification, find out who's the receiving end, send it half around the world to the other side, and it will land on the access point of your receiving party, who will then convert it to the format that is accepted or uh, uh, anticipated by the other side based on whatever uh, application he's using. So it goes from one end to the other end, transparently, doesn't require human interface. It goes through and is received onto the format and in fact, into the accounting system of your receiving party. So that's how it works in general. All right, that's the network we're talking about. Now, moving forward, um, I mentioned some things in passing earlier. I talked about an access point provider. There are also accounting solutions as well. Altogether, we call them service providers. And you see on your left, there's a box containing all the logos of our service providers. And some of them could be familiar. In fact, you may find that you're already using some of them. It's just that you didn't know of Apple, and therefore you are sending your invoices through their accounting system, but via an email. So the next thing to do is to give them a ring and tell them, hey, you know, I know you're on Apple. You are ready on this thing called invoice now. Can I then, can you help me to start sending invoices, not using emails? but using you know, the Papal way, and they will help you into that. So these are the organizations that can assist you and the solutions that have, you, you have. On the right, I must apologize, this is a bit dated because we couldn't keep up with, now that we have 40,000 organizations that are registered, but these are some of the larger organizations who are also coming on board or have come on board the network. Uh, so as I was sharing with you earlier, we started off after the first year with about a thousand organizations registered. Today, we are proud to say that we have in excess of 35,000 organizations registered on a network. So it is very likely your, your customers or your suppliers are already on a network, something for you to think about, for you to send and or receive your invoices. Okay, so the final slide that I have here uh, is basically for you. So after all this, what do you have to do? It's actually go back and find out what accounting system you are using. If it's SAP, wonderful. We have someone just next to me who is able to then share with you after this or any of the solution that you have, ask them to help you to get it converted or rather for you to start using uh, Papal rather than you know emails. Activate by having your company register on the Papal network and you're ready to go. All right, so that's coming to the last of my, my, set, my slide. Yes, that's the last of my slide. I want to thank you, but being the last of my slide is also the, possibly the beginning of your journey to come on board, to be more digitalized and to go into e-invoicing. So with that, I want to thank you. And I want to hand over to the next speaker, uh, Aaron. Aaron will be speaking to you from SAP. Aaron, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gilfred. Uh, I hope my voice is okay, so I will share my screen now. Super clear, Aaron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I hope uh, everyone can see the screen that I'm presenting. Uh, just to do a quick check, then we can move ahead uh, with the presentation.
Okay, so um, thank you very much for the uh, introduction, Victor, and um, you know, of course, uh, a very, uh, a very uh, in comprehensive and informative session that has been covered by uh, Gilfred. Um, so my name is Aaron Ang, I'm the head of Mid Market SAP Singapore, and um, it's critical that um, you know I'm not here alone. Obviously, together uh, I'm also here together with two of my colleagues. One is Kun Kanchana, um, the Asia Pacific Product Lead. Um, dealing with um, this, uh, you know, enablement and connection to the Pepo network, and of course, leveraging invoice now. And the other is Disa Wong. Disa Wong is our channel lead uh, for Singapore, managing um, a uh, channel ecosystem right of partners uh, that is driving the uh, business one and business by design uh, business for SAP. Okay. So um, I think, as I mentioned, Mike Gilford has gone through a very comprehensive uh, introduction uh, with details on what Invoice Now is about. So I think the objective is, you know, always on the next step, right? After, of course, we understand what Invoice Now is about. Um, as a large... Can, can I interrupt you a little bit? Can you make the slideshow? Oh, my apologies. Okay, so let, let me uh, just do the uh, presentation. Mm, thank you. Yep. Can you see that? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. Just uh, give me a moment uh, to uh, get this across. Yep. So as I was mentioning, right, um, in terms of the, uh, the introduction, right, to um, invoice now, um, how can you as a large enterprise or an SME benefit on this uh, invoice now platform? Um, SAP, of course, uh, maybe a little bit of introduction into SAP. Uh, SAP is the market leader in enterprise application software, right? We have helped companies uh, of all sizes and in all industries uh, running their business, right? And worldwide, 77% of the world's transaction revenue touches an SAP system. Okay? SAP is also the leading cloud company. We have to date, right, 230 million subscribers in our cloud user base. And approximately 80% of SAP's customers are SMEs. Okay, so true to the point, right? With this invoice now capability um, for available in Singapore, right? So how is SAP collaborating with SICC and IMDA to ensure that we bring forth this benefit um, to the market, right? This is where I'm going to cover today and share with you how you can leverage um, you know, the benefits of Invoice Now together with SAP and most importantly, our ecosystem of partners that already has this capability to help you to leverage this benefit. Okay, maybe a, a quick uh, understanding, right, in terms of uh, um, you know, the, the uh, evolution of e-invoicing uh, in context of global uh, regulations, right? Um, I'll just cover this very quickly. Of course, uh, at the end of the year, uh, towards the mid and the end of the slides, right? We will share more of the benefits and how you can, uh, SAP can support or help you as a customer to leverage on this Invoice Now platform, okay? I think uh, globally, right, um, in terms of the context of how the evolution of e-invoicing has come about, right? Um, there are a couple of uh, motivations, right? And, and, and we, we have all experienced this uh, in the digital economy today, right? Um, evolution of government digitization is nothing new, right? I mean, obviously, uh, Gilfred shared about pay now, right? And there's also, uh, you know, this uh, IRAS digital integration, uh, GST submission plus, you know, employee income submission and so on and so forth, right? Um, these are all initiatives, not just in Singapore, but of course, in all the other different countries, that they are driving in terms of digitization. And the motivation is actually quite straightforward, right? Now, why? Why are, why are countries globally doing this, right? Motivation of transformation, right? It's for tax compliance. It's for digital tracing. Um, it's for also the uh, validation of uh, authenticity in identification so that it leads to further security. Right? The hot topic nowadays is always talking about cybersecurity. And that's why, you know, in terms of the evolution of e-invoicing in conjunction with some of the other digital documents are evolving. Okay? There's also the uh, motivation, of course, right, of uh, invoice now. Right? As Gilfred mentioned, uh, you know, in, in the context of pay now and integration to pay now, 
you know, as a customer, if you leverage on this platform or this framework, you get paid faster. And again, right, with the advent of technologies, um, a lot of uh, big talk with regard to IoT, right? Uh, uh, what called Internet of Things, blockchain technology that is uh, you know, evolving and being fast adopted by different industries and communities globally. The ever, uh, what do you call that, uh, in changing and an important need, right, for digital security and authenticity is even higher, right? So in this case, the evolution of e-invoicing is, is only a matter of time. And as you can see, right, all the countries over the years have adopted this mode of delivery. Okay? And in response to this mode of delivery in terms of uh, you know, getting onto the trend, right, obviously SAP is also looking at how we can ensure that our solutions continue to comply um, to the uh, local regulations, um, to leverage on uh, you know, all these networks that are coming along. And um, this is you know, something that we have to align globally, regionally, and even locally um, in, in accordance to the local regulations. Okay? Now, some of the key challenges right, in terms of um, why, uh, or should I say how this can be done very effectively, right? um, it has to be online, it has to be real time, and it has to you know, manage all the complex transactional uh, integration, uh, uh, what do you call that, uh, formats, right? With the uh, local regulations. Now, three key points why um, governments are driving this, right? It's regulations driven by fiscal control. Now, um, for companies that have done, whether it's a regional business or global business, you know that, um, you know, in terms of some of the countries, right? Um, they require you to even issue business documents such as invoices and delivery notes and, and register these document formats electronically uh, at the local tax authorities. Examples are like what? Examples like Peru, Colombia, or Chile, right? So if you're doing business in these countries, you know that you have to register the documents electronically. And there are also regulations that are driven by savings in public procurement, right? A lot of, uh, a lot of gov uh, public sector governments, right? Um, when they are doing the uh, procurement uh, tenders, right, they want to take advantage of the benefits of electronic uh, procurement. They want to demand the use of electronic invoices, uh, as Gifford mentioned, so that they can also uh, dictate the uh, authenticity and, of course, make the payment faster. Right? Um, main example, the EU digital agenda, which affects all EU countries uh, till 2019. Okay, and last but not least, right, of course, tax administration offices. Um, there are several countries that are moving towards a digital reporting uh, environment, right? Um, so, and they're demanding, right? Or they're encouraging online reporting of business transactions. One of the key example is uh, the Spain S2 VAT reporting, okay? So as you can see, right? The evolution of uh, electronic documents being transacted online is nothing new. And this is the wave that we obviously want our uh, you know, our companies in uh, Singapore to leverage on and the invoice now framework or platform is the way to go. Of course, in relation or should I say in response to this, right? Um, as I mentioned earlier, SAP of obviously is, is, is not new to the, uh, the, the framework. Um, we have been uh, discussing with the ref, uh, respective uh, local, regional or global authorities and of course, we have a very tight discussion also with IMDA, right? And SAP's answer, therefore, is to support this initiative with a solution called SAP Document Compliance. Now, what is SAP Document Compliance, right? Um, it obviously leverages on the open framework. Um, you know, open framework as a, a set of common features and functions, right, that are used across globally, right? It leverages the uh, um, framework of the PEPOL network. That means it adheres to um, the governance of the specific uh, functionalities, um, the, the, uh, the, the mapping uh, fields of PEPOL. Um, and it also has a library of predefined processes. This country perspective uh, specific in all the different countries that we, uh, we have SAP document compliance. Uh, for example, right, we have incorporated the mapping table um, for the Singapore AGD requirement, 
right? Which means the accounting general department, right? And last but not least, we also have faster adoption, right? We encourage faster adoption, or should I say we cater for faster adoption to the change. For example, any change, PEPL change in terms of standards, we are in constant conversation and we will always update our standards to ensure that we are here to the, uh, the global requirements. So in short, what is the approach, right? Um, this is definitely uh, the SAP's uh, route in uh, supporting local enterprises or SMEs in driving that better adoption towards e-invoicing. Okay, with a combination of open trade, uh, open framework, and country-specific uh, localizations, right? The uh, responses have to be fast. The changes has to be uh, quick. Um, and from both Central Papua and Singapore Papua, right? We have integrated this to our ERP solutions. Um, you're talking about SAP S4 HANA or SAP Business One, right? It is already enabled and integrated. So if you are existing customer today. Um, that is using our ERP solutions, uh, whether it's on the cloud or on-premise, um, you would have already known that this uh, so-called integration to invoice now, it's already available. If you are a net new customer that has is not using SAP, but has the intention to uh, evaluate a solution that is, you know, Apple enabled, that is invoice now endorsed, SAP has the solution for you. That's the, that's, the, that's the key uh, message that we want to uh, bring across. And also not forgetting, right, the fact that SAP does not work alone, right? In the market uh, that we approach in Singapore, we have a list of partners, which I'll show later in our slides, that are already enabled to ensure that they can support and help you to leverage on this platform. So just a quick... Um, share of uh, SAP document compliance, right? Um, and and what, are, what are some of the uh, so-called certifications around the world, okay? SAP documents compliance, right, currently has local versions of PEPOL in 13 countries. Um, in APJ, you know, uh, for, for, for Singapore, we started in August, 2020. Uh, Australia in March, 2021. New Zealand in May, 2021. The uh, Japan government and Malaysia government, right, are currently doing the feasibility studies to also join the PEPOL e-invoice uh, platform. And when that comes along, definitely from a SAP document compliance perspective, we will also have that uh, version available. Now, PEPOL extended the scope from e-invoicing to um, e-purchase order. Um, SAP is also working um, on this development, right? And the plan is to make it available for more of the European countries. Uh, I'm talking about e-purchase order. Right, um, which is available for Norway, for Denmark, for Netherlands, for Sweden and Poland, um, more towards next year, about uh, early 2022. Right, uh, of course, I think in terms of our discussions with IMDA, IMDA is also in consideration of extending the uh, scope of the e documents. But of course, that's uh, a separate topic that we can discuss later. So in, in summary, in summary, right, SAP document compliance with PEPL, uh, just a quick run through of some of the uh, facts and figures, right, uh, to give the uh, local community more confidence of uh, SAP's endorsement on this. Um, we are a member of the Open PEPL uh, network uh, 16, since 16 of December 2016. Um, and we have started discussions and, you know, we have started to build that integration since uh, 2017. Um, we have the first customer on board in 2018, um, and we currently have 119 customers globally, right? That is on uh, that is using our SAP document compliance uh, on the Apple network. Um, in terms of hosting productive uh, productive tenants, um, with the availability of 99.9% .9 uptime rate just last month, right? We have around 50 customers that have actively transmitted invoicing, or should I say e-invoicing data through this integration, okay? Um, the DCS PEPOL is the name of the open framework. And uh, in Singapore, right, we also have the local version available uh, since uh, last year, 2020, uh, August. Um, and if you look at the adoption locally, I think Gilfred also shared in his slides, and some of those customers are also SAP customers. And um, in, the, uh, in the latest slides, I'll also share two customer case studies, right? That are, you know, very happy 
uh, getting onto SAP document compliance and they will share, I'll share some of their, their learnings. Okay, one of the customers that we have is called Low Services, right? Low Services is, uh, you know, currently have having their HQ in Germany. They have about 80 subsidiaries over the globe and they need a solution before when they discuss with SAP, right? They need a solution that meets the complexity of each of the countries in terms of invoicing, financial transactions, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, and this customer, right, took about two to three months um, for connecting to 420 customers and sending about 1,200 invoices per month, right? Um, you know, according to their CFO, right, saving business, it saves the business, right, about one hour every day just from eliminating manual invoice processing. Right. So the power of e-invoicing is definitely um, you know, very beneficial. And if you look at it from a, a leverage perspective, this is something that you should consider. The next customer that we have is uh, Sun Chemical. Right? And uh, Sun Chemical, right? I, and again, uh, just to quote the, the uh, global process lead, uh, Aldo McGinnis, um, the global process lead for order to cash from Sun Chemical. Okay? Um, we saw digital compliance as an opportunity to optimize operational performance and resource management. SAP document compliance exceeds expectations by streamlining our response to increase regulations that differ by country. So as you can see, right, whether you are a multinational company with uh, multiple entities, either regionally or globally, or you are doing business with a multinational company, the trend and direction towards adopting e-invoicing to streamline their operations, it's no longer something new. It is something that is mandatory, right? So how do you benefit as a local enterprise or a regional enterprise or even a global enterprise uh, on both sides, right? It's something that you should consider and take a look at. Um, just a very quick uh, chronology of uh, uh, events. Um, to give the audience right some uh, confidence in terms of uh, you know SAP's uh, readiness um, in uh, supporting invoice now. Okay, um, if you look at this chart right, uh, very quickly let me just uh, share a couple of uh, points right. Um, you know we attended the workshop conducted by IMDA in uh, November 2019 to about March 2020. And that's when where SAP got the uh, certification to be listed as one of the access point so, uh, solution providers in Singapore. And we started the development on Singapore countries, uh, the country specific template, right, for e-invoicing. Um, the solution was released uh, to the market um, on S4 HANA Cloud first, and then followed by some of our IERP solutions on on-premise in August and um, October. 2020 with uh, minimum scope value, uh, mi sorry, minimum value scope. The integration to uh, SAP Business One uh, was in last year, May. Okay, last year, May 2020. And the country, uh, and, and the country specific template was Singapore was an add on in October 2020 and released in January 2021, right? Of course, our team doesn't stop there, right? Our development team continues this development um, to enhance on the scope of S4 HANA and uh, release phase two on May this year in 2021. Right? So as you can see, right, in terms of the chronology of activities and events uh, in discussion on the support for invoice now, the standards, all our SAP ERP solutions are definitely certified for this and it can definitely help you as an organization to get on board this as soon as possible. Okay, as I mentioned, you know, um, SAP obviously has a very comprehensive um, pool or list of partners, um, which are certified pre-approved solution providers um, in the operating in Singapore, right? And these are some of our flagship uh, key partners, uh, Axis Consulting, MPS Solutions, AFON, Intercom, and so on and so forth, the World Management, right, and ISS. Um, who are already ready and, of course, also listed on the, uh, the website as a certified uh, 
uh, PEPO ready accounting ERP solution provider, right? So this would be a good information for you to reach out to, uh, to this solution partners um, to uh, discuss about your PEPO or e-invoicing uh, requirement needs, and we can enable them for you immediately. So last but not least, right? Um, as I mentioned, right, this uh, wave of transformation for e-documents, especially e-invoicing, is definitely on. Okay, um, it's an inevitable evolution that you know is impacting globally in terms of the way business is being trans uh, transacted and conducted. The question is always, when is it a good time for you to start? We always say to our customers, right, the best time to start is now, right? So with our customer success stories and the explanation of, or the, say, the endorsement and certification of SAP with Invoice Now, you can be assured, right, that you're right on this Invoice Now transformation will be a smooth and successful one. And with this, uh, I end my presentation. As I mentioned, my name is Aaron Ang. Um, the contact details were definitely provided uh, by the uh, event organizers and please do not hesitate to reach out to me if you have any further questions. Thank you very much. Well, thank, thank, you. You. Thanks. thank you very, Aaron, very much, Aaron, and, and thank you, uh, Gilfred, for your presentations. Really, um, really, uh, really interesting. And I, I want to start as, as moderator with a couple of questions uh, of my own before we take questions from the audience. I talked in my opening remarks about the resistance being a key factor. Um, how do we get over that? I mean, you mentioned in your remarks, Aaron, a few minutes ago that this is sort of unstoppable, it's inevitable, it's progress and so on. But how do we persuade more than just 35,000 companies in Singapore where there are hundreds of thousands of businesses to uh, you know, digitalize their processes, including, including invoicing? Okay. Um, yes, I did mention that it's inevitable because at the end of the day, it's the trend or evolution, right, of uh, digital document engagement in, in the form of supporting business transactions are already here, right? Yeah. So, of course, um, as uh, the experience that we have gone through with some of our customers and uh, also, you know, some of the suggestions or recommendations to current organizations, whether you're in large enterprise or an SME, right, is to first and foremost look at obviously what makes sense to you, right? Because at the end of the day, is, you know, getting onto a uh, platform or on, on doing e invoicing only makes sense if you are looking at, you know, it supports your business uh, direction, right? That means if I'm saying that, okay, if you are doing, you know, a lot of overseas business or you have the intention in the next even six months to three years, right, to diversify your, 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 your service or your product portfolio in allowing a regional or global uh, uh, business expansion, right? This is something that definitely, you know, in terms of the digital enablement of you being able to do business with some of these organizations on a B2B or even B2B2C perspective, it's important that you get yourself enabled. That's the first thing, right? Second thing, as I think Gilfred mentioned, right? Do you want to get paid faster, right? I think all businesses, cash flow is, uh, is the lifeblood of your business, right? So if you want to get paid faster, there are multiple venues, right? Pay now is one of them. But in terms of the uh, authenticity, the security, the traceability of e-invoicing, right? This, if this is a compliance practice that a lot of your business partners are practicing, Aren't you losing out if you don't? You still rely on manual invoicing. Yeah, but just help me understand: How does e-invoicing um, get you your payment faster? Surely the two are. I mean, it's a separate process, isn't it? Okay, so uh, I may not claim to be, you know, the exact expert on this, and uh, perhaps you, uh, Gilfred, can also add on, right? But at the end of the day, is electronic transactions. Uh, nowadays, of course, you know if you you, you see if you, if you if you send a manual invoice, you could you, you could be uh, scanning it in the front and you can save it in the form of a PDF, or if you're still traditionally using snail mail, 
right, to send the uh, invoice to your customers, what if it gets lost along the way? What if, you know, it gets successfully sent to the customer's office, but somehow someone, maybe the, 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 the mail club or the, uh, the invoice club left it on a table that no one is looking at. Okay, you can send by email, right? You can send by email, but again, right, the email processing on your customer's end, do they have the relevant technology to process those emails as what form of attachment? Is it a Word document? Is it a PDF document? And so on and so forth, right? They would also need time to manually intervene to transact and process your payment. Correct, Victor? Absolutely. With, yeah, with invoice now, uh, I think, you know, in terms of the description of how Gifford has uh, shared, it's electronic. The moment you're on the, on the, on the, on the network, right? The uh, transaction gets across, the, the, the invoice gets across, depending on your, then it's really depending on your, your business, uh, trend, uh, what do you call that, the agreement, right? With your business partners or your customers, right? Okay, what's the terms of payment? Is it 30 days, 60 days or 90 days and so on and so forth? The record is there electronically and the payment is being processed. Yeah, you hope. I mean, that, that's, 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 as you know, that's the great SME nightmare is you send off the invoice by whatever means, and then, uh, you know, you hope you're going to be paid. Um, but I think, you know, the, the resistance factor is so strong, not just here, but in many countries, uh, but it is so strong. Uh, Guilford, what do you think it's going to take? I mean, you work like a Trojan and your colleagues do too in order to move this forward. But what do you think it's going to take to, to make that glass that is not even half full yet, half full and then absolutely overflowing? Thanks, Victor, for that question. Actually, if I may just cite one example, which I think is happening in Australia. Uh, apparently, now, don't call me for Singapore because we have a different regime, different, different thing happening in Singapore. But in the Australian context, they are also coming up you know, to speed with invoicing. The government itself is promising that if you send government organizations an e-invoice, they will attempt to pay within the week. Now, I said it's not in Australia's context, that's very, very good. Uh, of course, there are different re reasons why we, we can or cannot do that and so on. But having said that, I think um, if I may speak for, for IMDA, in the past, in the recent one year, you would probably have heard of a number of grants that we have offered. You know, we had the uh, e-invoicing registration grant and something that came thereafter was the digital resilience bonus. And, and even specific to e-invoicing, we had something called the Chain Leaders Grant. Now, some of you are familiar, some of you may not be, but it's okay. The fact is that in the initial trust to move the market, to move that needle, it was important for us to provide some other form of incentive to lure those organizations who were indecisive to make the attempt to move forward. We, we can't keep going on like that, giving grants, because I think that was also packed on the fact that we had a difficult situation. The COVID-19 was a difficult situation. Some make, some break. And to give you an example, when we had our presentations last year to, you know, uh, originally it was really an on-site seminar. It became a webinar. But when we asked them last year during the circuit breaker, and we found that many of them couldn't go back to the office to receive their invoices in the letterbox um, or, or, or process their invoices and send it to the post office to make payment, I mean, to get the invoices sent out. Now, uh, I agree that in some point, electronic versions help. And therefore, you know, even though, um, you know, the mindset of the receiving party may, may decide not to pay as early, but because everything adds up, you get things, you receive faster, you, you know, you, you, you get your payment cycle initiated early. Obviously, you have to also make payment earlier. Otherwise, you will be, you know, defaulting in terms of your, your, your payment terms and all that. So it does help. But... As, as I think what you said in your very opening speech, this very basic fundamental business operation called invoicing is now becoming what we call a business continuity issue. It's about survival. If I don't get my invoices out this month, they're not going to pay me this month. They're going to pay me next month or the month after next. It's, it's a big issue. We talk about it. So I, I think um, while we can do so much in the 
technology space in digital in digitalizing and this is one area where we need the whole of the economy to assist i mean it's not just an individual organization but we have to have a infrastructure we have to have the policies we have to have you know even mas involved iras involved all other organizations involved in supporting this and the government agencies to be involved but it does take everyone to chip in to be able to support this whole infrastructure in other words everyone is able to uh, send out invoices early, receive payment early, you know, both sides, AR and AP, I think everybody in Singapore will benefit. And this is a catalytic uh, enablement that we want to do in Singapore, given the, the fact that digitalization is now becoming a very, very key driver to move the economy forward, especially because of the pandemic situation. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. And, and, and also, of course, in the terms of, 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 in terms of productivity increase, um, and allowing people to do something more useful than shuffling paper. I mean, at the moment, because of, you know, work from home is a default, I'm the one who goes in because I can and clears letter boxes and scans invoices, which yes, Aaron, all come by snail mail. And I scan them over to my finance team who process them, scan them back to me and we make electronic payments. So it's incredibly clunky. Um, and, you know, if we had, uh, as we will have, as you know, we're going to embark on, on, the, on the project uh, in the second half of this year. Uh, if we have invoice now, it will, it will simplify and streamline things dramatically. Just before I go to the audience, one last question for Aaron, and this is something you'll have to forgive me for asking, because it's a lot of my SMEs say this to me. So I'm reflecting to you what they're saying. They say they get they know SAP's big brand. They get scared because they think it's super expensive. So how how what is the pricing model uh, for all the support and the technology that you've built to support Peppel, not just here but internationally? You know, if I'm if I'm and I'm an SME, right? I'm 20 people sitting in Singapore, and if I sell, I don't know some nice publication to somebody in Vietnam, how do I, you know, what do I have to, to pay in order to get access to the terrific technology that is SAP? Thank you very much for this question, Victor. Thank you very much. I'll answer this question uh, in two parts, right? In two parts. Number one is, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the notion of cost, right? The notion of cost is always subjective in accordance to value, right? I'm sure all of us have read in the recent news of um, you know the collective uh, good class bungalows that were snapped up by some of our you know uh, very interesting uh, companies <laughs> who are actually term SMEs, right? Term SMEs. 40, even 40, million, Forty million dollars and upwards. Yeah, you, yes. you, you think you think about it, right? I mean, at the end of the day, they are successful SMEs, right? Again, it's always the notion and perception of value, right? And um, yes, obviously, as the, uh, well, you know, I think I, I dare say that SAP obviously is the largest uh, enterprise application service uh, solution principle, right, in uh, globally. But at the end of the day, we do have a list of um, very SME-friendly solutions um, that can cater to the needs um, of your requirements, especially when you're talking about this invoicing uh, portion, right? So I, I, my avocation is always this, right? Now, the motivation is important, right? Motivation in the sense that, why are you investing in this? Why are you leveraging on the invoice now network, right? Consequently, if you are, if the motivation justifies the investment, and I'll be specific, right? I mean, as I mentioned, right? Um, it always depends on your business strategy and the business partners or the customers that you're dealing with, right? if they are giving you a significant amount of revenue, whether it's now or in the next three to five years from a projection perspective, right? The market, the number of customers that you have, then I think consequently in terms of the uh, associated cost that you need to invest in, it's really probably like what, I don't know, 1% or 0.1% of that investment from a projected growth perspective, right? So value is subjective. The most important thing is give us a call, give our partners a call and have a quick discussion. It's a no obligation discussion, right? You have that in, uh, requirement. We discuss about it. We offer you a solution. And then obviously you can then see, right? Whether the investment is as per what you see, uh, what you always say, right? Or the, 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 the perception, or I would say even myth in the market that SAP is expensive. All right. right? 
Um, I won't press you further on that one, but let's go to, let's go to the, the audience. We've got some great questions and let's kick off with Iris who says, will Invoice Now work only for customers based in Singapore or those overseas customers as well? Guilford, you want to take that? Yes, let me do that. Yeah. Well, uh, you remember in the, the beginning of my, my message, I was saying that the reason why Singapore chose to go with Pebble, which is what Invoice Now really is, it's because of its versatility and universality. It, 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 it conforms to a universal standard and it's applied, therefore, globally. That means any organization who is on Pebble is able to send and receive invoices in a common format. So, you know, we, we can send to Malaysia, Malaysia can send to, to, to other countries. It's all in the same unified format. So, yes, your invoices can be used across. By the way, just to add on to that, you know, there's some of our larger organizations who have subsidiaries, not only in Singapore, but even, let's say in Malaysia, but they don't have an access point in Malaysia. So how do, how do they do that? You know, Well, essentially, because we, it's all digitalized, essentially what you need to do is to ensure that you have the ability to write or use an access point, even from Singapore. And the idea is because you have a specified Pebble ID that we can help to facilitate to ensure that you have a unique ID that allows us to identify you while you're in Malaysia, but writing on an AP in Singapore, it becomes transparent anyway. So, you know, that, that is something. So just to share on the, the question asked about, you know, whether it's only Singapore. No, it's not. It's international. By the way, after Singapore, New Zealand and Australia also came on board. And, as, and, and uh, IMDA is also in discussions with a lot of our ASEAN peers as well. They, they are at different timelines in terms of their journey. So over time, they will also be on the network. Thank you. Thank you. So Pebble is international and it's a growing network. That's really the key. Um, let's have one now for um, Aaron. Uh, here's one from Archana. SAP has a REBA e-invoicing system. Right. How similar or different is that from Invoice Now? Okay, I, I would definitely uh, I would definitely seek the help of uh, Kun Chanchana to answer this. But before I go, I, I pass the, the, the session over to Kun Chanchana, right? I would like to just say a couple of things on this. Um, if, to, if you have been using your mobile to make payments, okay, I mean, any of us, any of us, um, you know, again, if you are savvy, uh, I mean, I, I do have, right? Um, I'm not sure how many of you have Samsung Pay, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Alipay, at least on your mobile phones, right? So think about that. I mean, at the end of the day, yes, we do have the we do have the SAP Ariba uh, system that can do e invoicing, and um, you know I'll leave it to Kunchanchana to uh, to to kind of like share with you right how that is also in 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 the near future our plan to be leveraging on the uh, the invoice now uh, platform. Um, but alluding back to my earlier point, right, there will always be different platforms available in the market for you to do different forms of transactions, and the options are there. But Invoice Now is a national initiative driven by IMPA. I think, I think you get a hint now, right? It's like the muscle. Super clear. <laughs> because, Super clear. Right? Kun, uh, Kun Kanchana, would you like to add on to what I've just said? Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Your, uh, <laughs> your Google Pay is a good, uh, a good example. <laughs> yeah. So uh, for, the, for the Aripa, so, so Ariba e-invoicing is leveraging Ariba network. So imagine that you post the invoice in the ERP system to uh, and then you to your customer, and then you have to log on to Ariba network and then um, upload the invoice or click the invoice to send to your customer via Ariba network. But with the Pepo network. Once you click to post the invoice in your system, in your ERP system, it will be electronically transmitted to your customer at their end system, whatever uh, ERP system that they use, either SAP or other, it will transmit uh, automatically to the Pepo network. So you don't need to log on to Ariba network to upload or click to automatically post invoice via Ariba network. However, from uh, SAP uh, point of view, we have, we have many products that are connected to the invoice. 
like field glass, concur, ERP, or Ariba, or even B1. So now we are connecting our products to Pepo Network, starting from ERP, S4 HANA, Business One, Ariba is next in the roadmap, and we will um, expand the scope to the other solution that touch the invoicing in the near future. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, Ms. Kachana. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, here's one for uh, Guilford. Um, what's the average cost of getting any service provider to assist us in setting up the PEPL and getting being able to issue and receive invoices? And how easy is the implementation? I think that's something that it would be nice to maybe spend a little bit of time on, Guilford. If you can sort of help people visualize when they start, uh, what, 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 what's the, if you like, the template of implementation? Okay, certainly. Um, I had an, uh, I'm involved in something called the Chain Leader Program, and we were actually trying to get the larger organizations on board. These are essentially the more complicated solutions that they're using. Uh, you know, it could be Oracle or any other, other, other complicated solutions. And for them, it's not just a matter of wanting to be on a network. Because, um, you see, when you leverage on just the ability to send your invoices through Pebble, it is not a difficult problem to resolve. It's very, very easy. Actually, it has to do with just mapping the information that you have on your invoices um, into a Pebble specific format, which is universal. And that's about it. But you see, if you're large and you have, like the case of Fuji Xerox of, of Fuji Film, you had tens of thousands of, of invoices. And if you're going to change the whole channel midstream, you're going to move to a different um, um, server of sorts that you are able to now push it through Pebble. Obviously, there are gains to be benefited from in regards to efficiency, automation, and so on and so forth. So essentially, when we developed uh, or rather we assisted and provided a grant to such organizations, they said, hey, you know, Gilford, could we do more than just Pebble connectivity? Because of the need, can we add on, for example, um, some, you know, um, let's say artificial intelligence or blockchain or the ability to do um, automated robotics so that we are able to streamline the end-to-end -end process so we don't even have to worry about that conversion because it's done seamlessly through my entire process, you know, from three-way matching and so on. And the answer is yes, you can. Um, it may not be purple specific, but it's part and parcel of the implementation. For example, uh, many other organizations, because of the ability to use Pebble, because of its uh, rigorousness, they felt, hey, you know, or the rigor rather, they felt that, hey, you know what, then in that case, why do I get my suppliers to keep calling on my, my financial staff, my finance staff, to ask them about the status of the invoice and so on and so forth? Why do I incorporate the whole flow, the business process, the whole flow, into a, 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 a sort of a portal or something that allows them to actually go in and check on their own statuses because Pebble has those capabilities built into the whole framework. So in other words, it uses technology to improve and add on another layer of technology. So I think that's, that's what we are doing. Now, on the other flip side, we have organizations out there who are saying, yeah, I know I've got the big boys, SAP you know, owners and so on, but you know, I'm a small time one-man show or a two-man show. Um, you know, how, how do I benefit from that? Well, um, there are very... Uh, how do I say, low-cost solutions out there. In fact, if you look at the IMDA website, you will first be able to see the entire series, the entire set of about 130 solution providers of all sizes and all complexities and prices. You will also be able to see at least three of those solutions that provide a free of charge usage. In other words, they are free for, uh, free for you to use and implement. Uh, they have, they have no, there's no charge. Some may come in with a charge above a certain threshold in terms of transactions, but uh, many of them do not even have a, you know, a threshold, which means that, well, just keep sending your invoices out and receiving your invoices. It's like an inbox in your email. Instead of seeing emails, you see invoices. That's basically it. Now it's vanilla, no, no bells and whistles, no, no, no special frills. But hey, if that's all you want to do, you want to send your, your government invoices through a, a platform which they can accept easily, that's a free solution for you. So what I'm saying, the scale is from zero dollar all the way to something you want to do to make it more elegant. So it's really up to the organization. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's quite a lot of oh, a couple of questions again on costs. Uh, of course, everybody in business is always focused on costs, um, but also security. Would you like to say a little bit about security since you know, cyber threats are growing and evolving and everybody is um, 
beginning to focus more and more on how they protect themselves and their business and their customers. What about the security of moving data like invoices and payment instructions um, through the Pebble platform? Okay, I can take it out and uh, maybe Eric can, can add on if he has anything else to add on. Now, essentially, we take a step back and we ask ourselves, today when you send out your invoices, now if you're sending it on, 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 on the postal services, you don't know who's going to receive it or whether it gets thrown in the drain perhaps, right? You don't know where it ends up with and who is able to open it and see it. So essentially, invoices are not, if I may put it, um, not essentially a critically sensitive you know, document if you compare with any other things like payment and so on. Now, having said that, um, just to uh, uh, allay any fears, as far as Pebble is concerned, it has covered the entire regime of security requirements. In fact, from access point to access point, I mean, the entire network that you saw me show earlier to you just now, the entire Pebble network is fully encrypted. Okay, so your information is secured. It does not get, in fact, there is in fact a requirement from the expired, uh, from like IMDA, which is a, a Pebble authority, to, uh, to the access point providers, they, they are not allowed to open or store any invoices. They are basically a, a transfer mechanism. They take and they send it out, convert and send it out, but they, are in, they have no right to store any of the information unless it was being explicitly requested for by their customer. Otherwise, no storage, send through, and they're all encrypted. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure. Maybe, maybe I'll just add on a couple of points that Gilfred yeah, mentioned. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, you see, I think, I think by and large, uh, Gilfred mentioned on the uh, security, right, from an infrastructure perspective, mm -hmm. right? Again, from SAP's uh, compliance, uh, obviously, we have gone through, you know, very intensive discussions with IMDA, right, on, on complying to the invoice now framework and getting that certification. Mm -hmm. So again, right, even on a functional level, Right. Obviously, if you're using SAP Business One or SAP S4 HANA or ERP solutions or some of the other solutions that in, in the course of time would be endorsed right, or leveraged, uh, certified on invoice now, there are always uh, checks and balances in place in terms of, you know, like for example, how you do the invoice matching within a functional perspective to ensure that that digital uh, invoice being received by your customer, it's matched and verified. Uh, answering to, I think, Ms. Lenin Chao on the, on, on the question, right, that how it can be verified to be correct, right? I think we all know that a manual way of validation has is prone to more errors than the digital way of validation, isn't it? Of right, course. so it's, it's definitely more correct. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay. Um we're, we're, we're running out of time shortly, but let me just ask a question that um, uh, you know, my team has asked me. And that is, well, if we, when we move to uh, Invoice Now, we're gonna have some customers who are on the Pebble platform um, with the Pebble ID, and we will have others that are not. Um, so that means we'll have to operate, i.e. we as a two-person finance team, we'll have to operate uh, you know, two two ways of getting paid. Uh, the the old way, with uh, you know, uh, emailing invoices, and the new way using Invoice Now. Uh, what have your customers and your um, your partners' experience been with that? I mean, how what, what do they tell you, Guilford, about uh, the difficulties or otherwise of managing that kind of two track process? Mm. Thank you, Victor. It's a very, very valid question. We have had a number of queries and we have had a number of ways that we try to help them overcome. Now, we all know any data migration, system migration requires a, a, an element of you know, transition. So you have a transition plan. It also requires some time involved in terms of getting things organized and all that. For example, as just because an organization today becomes Pebble ready, it doesn't mean all the suppliers will be Pebble ready. And therefore, you can't expect they all to send you on Pebble straight away. In fact, it may last for a very long and protracted time before everyone gets on Pebble. So yes, at any point in time, there is an operational requirement for you to be able to say, okay, uh, I have to have a or somewhat semi or even automated process whereby every billing cycle, 
I determine organizations that have converted to Papal before the bill cycle. So what I do is that, you know, uh, at that point, if I'm able to, you know, to, 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 to do a, and by the way, you can do APIs to that portal that I was telling you about where you can ch check for organizations who are on Papal. And for those who are on Papal, what you can do is you route their invoices to a different stream through Papal. Otherwise, for those who are not yet, you know, the, the process kicks in to enable the existing engagement model, which is basically sending through emails and so on and so forth. So there we are process. Um, one of the things that IMDA does in assisting organizations, and I'll share with you some things that we do over and above the typical standard, you know, grants and all that that we do. For large organizations, we have helped them in a number of ways. One of them is called a wave methodology, basically waves. The idea is that how do they operationalize this whole progression and whole, uh, you know, migration strategy? That means how they, they automate as much as possible so that, you know, every month they do a, a, a certain extraction of information, thus an, a, an EDM, for example, to preempt their, their customers that they are sending via Papal, and then work through a process whereby the customers will then revert back on the success of their Papal transaction. So it's a little bit like a mini project of sorts, but there is a, a wave engagement that we, 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 we assist them to do. Um, also beyond that, uh, again, these are some extensions that we do. It's really not our, you know, our bread and butter kind of work, but we extend this support. For some other organizations, we do something called an IPO. It stands for the Invoice, um, Invoice Now Partners Onboarding. IPO for short. It's actually what we do is we extend the outreach mechanism and, and we don't have a lot of people. We have a few digital ambassadors. We get the ambassadors to work with the chain leaders or the large organizations who are very, very keen. And we say, okay, you give me the list of organizations who, and, and we will write to them. We will find out what solutions they have and we will then help them to start off a kickoff, you know, buying, a, getting a solution, which is free maybe, getting themselves registered on Papal and therefore sending to you their very first invoice. So I think that's, uh, those are some of the things that we do to initiate and to help things spin off uh, more quickly. Yeah, hope that helps. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, I mean, as we just close, uh, maybe you just like to, um, Guilford uh, and, and Aaron too, just recap if people are interested to know more, what do they do next? Shall I start? Yeah, yeah, please keep it. Go ahead. First and foremost, thank you very much for even that interest that you have. Now, this is, an, this is a movement that will take a while, but certainly you are ahead of the curve and it's very important for you to be there because down the road, there are technologies that will come and embed into, the, into what you already have that will expedite your whole process. So first things first. Um, look into your current environment. Where are the low hanging fruits? Where are the pain points? Is it because of your accounts payable side that you are struggling with? Or is it accounts receivable side? You can do either or both. Let's say it's accounts payable. So you focus on your suppliers. The next thing to do is first determine the solution that you are currently using. Is it Papal ready? I mean, you can go to the website and check whether it's a Papal ready solution. And if it is, work with your solution provider to say, hey, I want to be registered on Papal, firstly. Secondly, I want you to help me to now start to stream my invoices or rather to receive my invoices from my suppliers, not through an email, but through Papal. Can you help me to do that? You know, and and they'll, they'll probably you know, work out some, some arrangements for you. And then after that, you can start to send and receive invoices and do that kind of wave thing that I mentioned as you progress month after month. So that's, that's kind of my my two cents worth of explaining how you want to come on board. Having said that, you know, IMD has an e-invoice e e um, at imda.com.sg, an email, write to us, and we will be more than happy to help you, you know, to answer any of your questions or write to me or even, I'm more than happy to share whatever I know to help you to come on board as well. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. And over to you, Aaron. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks. Thanks, Gilfred. My, my answer is actually pretty straightforward, right? Um, uh, apologies, I didn't state down my email, but my email is very easy to remember. It's aaron.ang at sap.com. That's it. Yeah. Let me repeat again, right? aaron.ang at sap.com. No question is too trivial. Just drop me an email. Simple. <laughs> That's fantastic. Thank you. And thank you both for uh, being with us today to, to talk about Invoice Now uh, and um, how IMDA helps and how uh, SAP helps and enables. Uh, it, it is a movement that is essential, in my view. It's part of uh, the future. It's part of streamlining office processes, which are really lagging in the majority of, of businesses, lagging way behind. Um, and it will enable 
better productivity. Um, it will enable uh, more accurate data in terms of flow and hopefully will result in faster payment. We will have to see about that one. But thank you both very much indeed. Um, I want to thank the audience too for your questions. Um, and uh, if there's anything we can do to help you at uh, SICC, just drop us an email here to help at SICC.com.sg. There are topics or themes or challenges or problems you'd like us to uh, focus on or cover in these webinars or events, don't hesitate to let us know. But for now, from uh, Guilford uh, and Aaron, and from me and the team at SICC, it's good afternoon and thank you very much indeed. See you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.